everybody. Greetings to all my listeners. Early morning breakfast. I'm Apostle Rogers. I'm the Master Chef. Delighted to be with you this morning. I want you to call Aunt Jenny and put those beans on low. Tell the kids they got to sit down at early morning. Breakfast is on the air. Delighted to be with you this morning. This broadcast is being sponsored by United Holiness Deliverance Temple. That's UHDT 10121 Sign Road, Dallas, Texas 75227. Like to call the church? You can call the church at 972 929-3550, 972-329-3550, 329-3550, 972-329-3550. I've set up a special sale number from all my listeners out there that you can call, whereas if you don't get an opportunity to get in the pipe and get your prayer request in, if you just like to call me, let me know how you feel about this broadcast. Even if you have a prayer request, something that you don't want to discuss on the airways, you can call the sale number, which is 972-329-6888, 972 972- 329-6888. like to give you a special invite to come out and be in service at the UHDT. Wednesday night is our Bible study night where we dig into the nuggets of the Word of God that you might know what is the will of God concerning you. Starting next Wednesday night, we're going to be dealing with the seven churches of Asia, and we've broken up into different groups and teams, and they're going to do their presentation of the seven churches of Asia. That prayer service starts at 7.30. Regular evangelistic service starts at 8 p.m. Saturday night is the night of exports. Yes, we're having service tonight. Night, the night of exploits. When we started this church, the Lord said, Build your church upon Daniel 11 and 32. That's the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Prayer starts at 7 30. Regular evangelistic service starts at 8 p.m. Now, Sunday school starts at 9 45 and not 9 46. Midday service starts at 11. And when many church doors are closed, having service every Sunday night, and that service starts at 7 30. Again, Sunday school starts 9 45 and not 9 46. Midday service starts at 11. If the Lord delays his coming, I will be speaking in the morning and tomorrow evening at UHDT. You or to yourself to come out and be in our service. If you'd like to visit us on the web, you can go to UHDTChurch.com or you just go to UHDT Church. And I tell you what we've done. We put our... Um, we put the past broadcast on YouTube, and you can visit us at that YouTube address and see Agents uh, Agents of Hell. It's on YouTube there. We put it on just a, uh, in a few hours. We had, uh, I think it was over 33 hits on it, and I don't know how many is on it now, but we're going to be presenting this, this Saturday. This Saturday's message will be available next Saturday to put on it. The past Saturday, we're picking it up today, a copy of it, and getting it ready to go. So I want you to know that you can go to UHDT Church. UHDT Church, and you can pick us up on YouTube, and you can hear the message of a few Saturdays ago. If you'd like to mail, mail me and let me know how you've enjoyed this broadcast, if you'd like to send me a prayer request, if you'd like to be a financial contributor to this ministry, you can go to, you can mail your, your letter, uh, postcard, or whatever, to UHDT, P.O. Box 850346, that's Mesquite, Texas, Zip 75185, that's UHDT. P.O. Box 850346, that's Mesquite, Texas, and the zip is 75185. I'm I'm wrapped tight this morning, just delighted to be here with you. Got a special announcement for you. Got a special announcement. I want you to listen to all my listeners out there. Extra, extra. Hear all about it. Hear all about it. Starting November the 19th through the 22nd, we're going to be in a pre-Thanksgiving revival. A pre-Thanksgiving revival at United Holiness Deliverance Temple. And the speaker is going to be yours truly, Apostle Rogers. And you get a chance to come and meet the man behind the mic. You get a chance to see who I am, hear my voice. And our theme is, I'm different and I don't mind. The Lord gave me that thought. Not too long ago, and we we made we're making T-shirts. I'm different, and I don't mind. Leviticus ten and ten, and the Lord said, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, unclean and clean. So we're going to be in a pre-Thanksgiving revival. That's going to be November nineteenth through the twenty-second. That's going to be a Wednesday night through a Saturday night. I'll be speaking nightly. Again, that's one zero one two one Sign Road, Dallas, Texas, seven five two two seven. And again, that's seven uh, nine seven two three two nine three five. Five five zero is the number there at your church, 972-329-3550 for further information. Also, you can call that cell number, 972-329-6888. 730 nightly, it's going to be on. It's going to be a hot time in the Lord. And I want you to know something, that Saturday night, that's going to be the 22nd, we're going to have a special anointing service. I'm telling those that want to bring your prayer clause, bring your oil. We'll pray the prayer of faith over them, and we'll believe God that God is going to do it for you. I know some people might say, well, Pastor, what are you saying? Go to the book, Acts 19. And 11, Acts 19 and 11 said, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul that he took from his body's handkerchief or apron. He gave it to the sick, and the sick was healed, and many diseases depart out of them. When I was in 
Port of Spain, Trinidad, and revival over there a few months ago. I'd never seen it like that. People brought gallon jugs of water for me to pray over, for me to pray over. And at the end of the service, when I was getting ready to leave, some were walking up to me and rubbing on my arms and saying, I want to get some of that anointing off of you. I saw God heal. God healed a woman that was having problems in her left hand. Didn't know it. Come to find out later that she was a federal judge. God healed her so is beyond a shadow of a doubt. She went and brought her sister. Another young lady came and was riding around in her car and in Port of Spain. In Trinidad, the temperatures is either 70, 75 degrees. It's tropical weather. This lady was riding around in her car with the heater on. She told the pastor of the church that she just didn't feel well. She was going home, going to leave an offering and go home. The pastor convinced her to stay. And when I got up to speak, I went down the aisle and I just looked at her and I told her to stand up. And I began to ask her what was the problem. She began to tell me how sick and stuff she was. And I, I said, you believe that Jesus Christ can make you whole? And she said, I do. Pray to pray of faith for her. Told this young lady, I said, you, you see that door back there? I want you to run. She said, I said, run. She took her shoes off and ran to the back door. And when she ran back, she ran up and down the steps of the pulpit. And we had to stop her. And she was crying. So when I was asking her what was going on, she was saying, Pastor, I haven't run in 20 years. God healed her of lupus. God healed her of lupus. And come to find out she was the number one talk show host in Port of Spain and Tambago. You know, God is a miracle working God. This is for those that believe. It's going to be a night to remember. I'm giving you a special invite to come be with us in our pre Thanksgiving revival. It's going to be November the 19th through the 22nd. United Holiness Deliverance Temple. Yours truly is going to be the speaker. I'm, 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 I'm wrapped type and I'm excited about what God is going to do. If you really want to know what is the will of God concerning you, if you want to hear the true word of God, I'm giving you, I dare to show up. Bring your sick self, bring your mind lost self, or you don't know exactly where you are and who you are. If you're hearing voices in your head, ain't no such thing as schizophrenic. You just need the devil cast out of you. Somebody say, I'm bipolar. All you need is the devil cast out. I'm hearing too many voices. Get the devil cast out of you and you will be delivered. Whom the sun set free is free indeed. It's going to be a night of miracles. It's going to be a night of deliverance. There's many things that I could say over this airways that I can't say over these airways. And, and I'm giving you that special invite to come and be with the pastors. Show up. Evangelists, show up. You know, it's one thing about being saved and being a minister, but it's something else to know the power of God. And many of our young ministers today have ruined themselves because they thought they were a wonder or they wanted to be a wonder, but never took time to sit under good, strong leadership and be taught the will of God. It's one thing to know the word, but it's something else to know how to deliver word. It's one thing to know a recipe, but it's something else to know how to put the recipe together. And this is what I'm admonishing those of you out there that are really looking for a true word, those of you that's looking for some direction, those of you that are restless in your spirit, and you're telling yourself it's got to be more to this than what I'm getting. I, I give you this invite to come and be with us. That's November the 19th through the 22nd, Thanksgiving, a pre-Thanksgiving revival. Now, our theme is I'm different and I don't mind. I'm different and I don't mind. It's going to be a, a barn burner. It's going to be a hot time all the week. And remember that Saturday night, bring your prayer cloth. I, and we were in Port of Spain. They were bringing shawls. They were bringing and towels and this and that and the other big, I mean, huge bottles of oil. And we prayed to pray our faith over God healed. He showed himself at, up as God. And I'll tell you something that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God hasn't lost a bit of his power. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Now when we'll get into the word of God. We're going to try to get this thing down so we can let some of you get into the pipe. We were so delighted on last Saturday's broadcast. Some of the phone calls we got all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. One pastor called all the way from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And I, I got some news for you this morning. Do you not know? Do you not know there were six judges in, in North Carolina that stepped down from their judge seat because they refused to marry same sex people. These judges, one day said they could not go against the word of God. One judge said he didn't know altogether what he was going to do, but he believed this, that God would supply his needs. Six judges stepped down because they refused to uh, take part in what they believe is of the devil and not of God. Isn't this something? I just even been noticing the airways here in Dallas since I've been preaching. I hear very little, very little said from preachers about what's going on in our society. And, I've, and I brought something for you this morning. You know, this this Ebola thing that we just have. Did you have you noticed something? Have you noticed something like this Ebola epidemic as we were supposed to have? It appears as if it was something staged. It looked like something that was put together in Hollywood. We had one man, Mr. Thomas Duncan, that died. And then we had two other people that got sick. And they shipped them out to different places, one to Atlanta and the other one to Maryland. And then they were all. Uh, 
it was such an uproar at Pre Presbyterian Hospital. They were criticized by the federal government for how they handle the e Ebola virus, as to say. But as I say, you never had a fire. You may have a fire drill, but you really don't know what a fire drill is until you have a fire. And just the other day on the news, on Channel 11 News, and I, and I want you to notice something. The media, the media doesn't put certain things out, like these six judges that uh, resigned in North Carolina. The local Dallas News, you don't hear anything about that. The local Dallas News didn't even bring up the things uh, about Mayor Parker in in Houston, Texas, and I hope you all are still burning her mailbox up with your letters and your uh, sermons and messages since you don't stop the gravy line. Keep the gravy line going. We want to make sure she stay full and everybody else that's close to her have any kind of ideas of the same mind that they can get some of this gravy too and let them know that we ain't playing. This ain't no game. We mean exactly what we say. But I noticed that the news, the news media here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex said nothing about these judges that stepped down because they refused to marry same-sex individuals. And I want you to know something. Our mayor, Mayor Jenkins, he made such a bold statement on Channel Lou that Doug Dunbar was interviewing him the other day. We're supposed to be Ebola-free. This, this was a setup. This was nothing but something that they conjured up to put a spook in people just to shake up our society. They, they, one man died, two got it, and then all of a sudden they're, they're okay. One doctor got it, and then he walked around. He was giving blood uh, transfusion to different people, helping them out. But if you notice how it happened, Happen. Just notice how it happened. It was. It never was an epidemic. Yet an epidemic was created. This thing was controlled all the time because it wasn't meant for it to spread all over America. And now they're using Dallas as a model as how to handle this thing. And then. We're being praised by President Obama as how Presbyterian handle and the Dallas Medical Force, how they handled it. And I remember when this young lady that went to Atlanta, Atlanta was uh, having her problem and this main doctor that spoke before uh, Congress and how he, he evaded the word of saying that. He said, our thoughts are with her, not our prayers. But have you ever noticed something? America's a dog. She will live like a dog with fleas all over her. And then when she get in trouble, they're talking about having a word of prayer. How can, why don't you pray to Mother, Ma Mother Nature? That's who you talk about on the news. Ask Mother Nature. Ask the devil to hear you. And this is where we are now. So he was on uh, the news the other day saying how we are Ebola free and he was so bold to go over to the apartments where the young lady was and everything like that and no big deal, no big deal but look look how he was trying to show himself as being some kind of a hero that I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do. It's nothing wrong. It never was anything wrong and then last but not least Former, George, former President George Bush come riding out of the sunset and he went to, uh, and, and here come the cavalry, President Bush, former President George W. Bush. And then he, uh, he, he proves to the world that the, that the coast is clear, that everything is fine. He goes to Presbyterian and then he goes down the aisle. He hugs the young nurse and all this. They're taking pictures together. Why do they do this? Don't you know this thing was rehearsed? Don't you know they had this already fit, uh, fit? What the media does, the media you is people that are in position, people of authority, people that are renowned, people that the public seem to listen to. And Texas is a Republican state anyway. So what they did, they had former George. He wouldn't even come out and campaign when McCain was running for the presidency. But he shows himself at Presbyterian Hospital waving, how y'all doing and everything like this. Then he's taking pictures. And now now the American public has a piece. The, the people in Texas have a piece called former president George W. Bush. He went to Presbyterian Hospital. He hugged for he walked down now. He took pictures with him. So now everything is over. The Ebola virus is gone. Dallas is Ebola free. But look at all the money that they're making. It's just like 9-11. 9-11 changed air traffic forever. There was a time you could go and sit with loved ones at the airport right up until sit at the gate until they got on the plane. But since 9-11 now, you can't even go past the security point. It changed our lives forever. So just like the uh, swine flu. Remember swine flu? They, the companies that made the masks and the goggles and all this kind of stuff. They made slews of money because of the swine flu virus all over in Japan and getting on the airliners and so forth. Then swine flu, just, it just zipped. It's like they talk about the West Nile virus. They even came and showed it on the news that the mosquitoes had built up an immunity to the poison that they were spraying out. But then you ask yourself the question, why then are they spraying the poison? I don't know, but somebody's supposed to be stupid. It's just that we are supposed to adhere or believe whatever they say. 
say. And I know there's many of you out there probably don't believe what Pastor Rogers say, but I'm not a political person. I'm just a Bible person. I'm a preacher that preached the gospel. And for some of you that think that Jesus Christ's lifestyle in the, in the Bible during the lifetime of the Apostle Paul and Peter was in some kind of a vacuum, you are sadly mistaken. You can go into the pages of history and find out about how Christ changed the Roman Empire, how, how that the, everything that happened is a part of world history. And, I, and, and then we have to get to the point of understanding something. Is our government what it said it is? And I've got some stuff I'm going to show you in a few minutes how it's not just here in America. It's all over the world. This thing is taking shape. They're getting unified. They're talking about now of having uh, one or two football teams in, in England or where London, where the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are playing now. They're getting diversified even more with basketball. They're trying to bring in this oneness. They're trying to show us how we are. But, you know, sometimes people say, well, Pastor, you have to be careful what you say. But listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just not a fool. I'm just not a fool. When I look at the, the tapes and I've seen the information concerning 9-11 and how we lost so many people in 9-11. And then when I look at when I look at the, uh, the the footage that they show of the Pentagon, the Pentagon was hit in an area that was under construction. Mind what I'm saying now. The Pentagon was hit in an area that was under construction, supposedly by the United States government and by the news media. It was hit by a DC-10. Now, a DC-10 has two engines. I believe they're General Electric engines on one on each wing that is mounted under the wing. And this DC-10 was supposed to have plowed into the side of the Pentagon. Now, one thing I have a problem with, I have a problem with how in the world could a DC-10 plane hit the Pentagon and make a hole smaller than the DC-10 is? Now, help me out. Now, if it's an F-16, they can pull the wings back and maybe go through the hole, but not a DC-10 because it has a fixed wing. Plus, it has two big engines under the wing, and if those engines, if it was like they say it happened, where are the ruts? Where are the grooves that those engines should have plowed into the earth as it was on its way into the side of the Pentagon? And when you look at the wingspan and the height of the, the height of the fuselage of a DC DC ten plane, then if that the, the top of the fuselage, if it went in that hole, that means that those engines had to grind deep into the ground, but there were no scars on the ground. Now, on the other hand, if there was no scars on the ground, that means that the engines were high enough off the ground that they did not touch the ground. That means that the fuselage would have cut through the top of the roof. But if you look at the footage prior to the fire and everything caving in on it, there was one big hole in the side of the Pentagon. Now, if you can explain to me how a DC-10 did that, then I will believe what you're saying about 9-11. But if you can't explain that, look like to me the Pentagon got hit by a missile. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm not, you know, I didn't go to Harvard or anything like that. But I'm just saying what our government, and if you are lying about the Pentagon, what else are you lying about? And I'm not going to get into all of that today, but that's another broadcast. Boy, you ought to yourself to be at this revival. It's going to be hot. Now, I got a scripture for this morning. Uh, in the book, in the, this is the KJB and KJV in Philippians 3 and 1. It said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it's safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of of the concision for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh Paul said beware of dogs you not know in the back in those days a dog was considered a low down thing a dog was considered something that was the scum of the earth because the dog ro ro roamed the street and the ape the refuge of the streets and so forth like that even uh, when David went out against Goliath Goliath referred to himself am I a dog in other words don't insult me like that. But Paul is saying beware of dogs because there are some preachers that have a dog spirit. They are the scum of the earth. They love filthy lucre. The Bible, I just call them sleeping dog that love to slumber. They won't even bark. It's a sad thing. You got a watchdog and he won't even bark. He won't even let you know that the thief is coming. What are you saying? When the watchmen see the sword coming and warn not the people, God say the, the people's blood are going to be upon his head. But when he sound the trumpet and the people fail to take heed to the warning then their blood is on their own hand he said beware of evil workers what are you saying pastor brother there god has a universal plan and god knows exactly what he's doing everything that's happening now is happening as god permitted remember the devil is a created being so he has no power you can go to the the, the fifth chapter of uh, what that saint john when jesus cast the devil i mean saint mark when jesus cast the devil 
out of the woman at the, the man at the coast of the gatherings. This man had legions of devils in him. And if you all remember that movie that I believe uh, Nicholas Cage was in called Ghost Rider, when he confronted the demon in that movie, he, uh, he said his name was Legion. And even in that scripture, that's why I'm saying you have to be real careful of a lot of the mess that's going on. Beware of evil workers. Evil workers is just what the Bible says. They were evil. They are doing things against the kingdom of God. They're doing things against the work of God. And it's not altogether for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Just a few weeks ago, talking about spiritual wickedness in high places. Just a few weeks ago, we had the Pope saying that uh, the Roman Catholic Church is going to have to be more gay friendly. What do you mean gay friendly? I said, I've said it once and I'll say it again. No practicing homosexual is going into the kingdom of heaven. If you go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, you'll find it said, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He goes down the line and names some of these things, but not only just uh, uh, effeminate, not only homosexual, not only gay people, but I don't care if you're an alcoholic, if you're a drunkard, extortioners. And Paul said, and of such were some of you. That means you cannot be pra a practicing liar. God said a liar wouldn't even tear in his sight. Why does God hate a liar? Because the devil is the father of lies. He told the first lie. So the, he fathered lies. Law, lies started with him and God hate a lie. That's the reason we, we should let our words be yea, yea and nay, nay for anything more than this coming of evil. When you think of principalities and you think of powers, you are talking Talking about angelic being demon forces operating through people. They're operating through people. They're operating through our federal government. They're operating through our news media. If you check into the news media, ABC, NBC, CNN, they all present themselves as if to say they are fighting or beating one against another. But if you go into it and check into the ownership of it, most of all these stations are owned by the same families, the same people on these stations, and they tell them what to do. Not too long ago, there was a man that came on the news. There was an organization that owns a group of hospitals, and what did they tell the people? They they told, this man told the doctors that uh, a certain percentage of your patients that come to this hospital should, should get prescription. A certain percent of your, your patients that come into this hospital should be admitted into the hospital. That doesn't, doesn't mean whether they need to or not. We need to do this to make this thing happen. Have you noticed how at a certain time when you get off from work, they have all these info commercials telling you about uh, Celebrex and this and that and the other and all of this and, and, and Xarelto. They had, uh, Xarelto is supposed to be a medicine that's used for uh, thinning your blood. It's supposed to be better than Wolfram. You don't have to go to the lab every uh, week. But Xarelto is up in a lawsuit against people that are having all kind of brain bleeds and different kind of serious problems and yet they are still advertised. Have you noticed that when on the news when they tell us about medication, don't nobody say well, well pastor you fighting doctor? I'm just telling you what God said, what the Bible said. I have no fight against doctor but I do have a, a fight against people that's trying to make merchandise out of us. When they read the, the side effects of these medications how they can kill you, cause strokes cause blood uh, blood clots and all this kind of stuff and yet they say it like it's really no big deal but oh I can breathe better I can do this better but look at the high cost and today I want to share something with you about same sex marriage I said I was going to slow it down some and I, God knows I'm trying to slow this thing down some but I want to read an article to you that I pulled up about same sex marriage it said same sex marriage also known as a gay marriage is a marriage between two people of the same sex it said legal Legally recognized of same-sex marriage or possibility to perform the same-sex marriage and sometimes referred to as marriage equality or equal marriage, particularly by, particularly by supported the legislation of the same-sex marriage is characterized as refining marriage, as many opponents say. They said the first law enabling same-sex marriage in the modern time was enacted during the first uh, decade of the 21st century. As of the 15th of October, 2014, 17 countries, I believe it's got Argentina, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, it says Portugal, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, the United Kingdom, 
Iroquois, and then it says contain uh, and say and certain subnational jurisdiction parts of Mexico and parts of the United States allow same sex couples to marry. It said that law in Luxembourg will come into force on January 1, 2015. Polls of various countries show that. There is a rising support for legally recognizing same-sex marriages across race, ethnicity, age, religion, political affiliation. And boy, I'm telling you, this thing is really getting to be something. So it's not just here in America. So what are we doing? We're fighting something that's becoming global. We're fighting something that in Denmark, they say it's okay. In parts of Mexico, they say it's okay. In the Netherlands, they're saying it's okay. So the whole world is becoming anti-God. If the whole world is becoming anti-God, then that means, do you know what this means? It says that the government officials are changing laws that pertain to marriage. That government officials are changing laws that pertain to marriage. If government officials are changing laws that pertain to marriage, then what are we going to do? And, look, and this same article says that same-sex marriage can be performed in a secular civil ceremony or in a legal setting. Various faith uh, communities around the world support allowing same-sex couples to marry or conduct same-sex marriage ceremonies. For example, Buddhism in Australia. I said the Church of Sweden. Uh, the, cons the conservationist Judaism. USA Episcopalian. The humanitarian Judaism, Native American Indian with two spirit tradition, Druids, Metropolitan Community of Church, the Quakers, the Reconstructionist Jews, Reformed Jews, Unitarian Universalists, and the United Church of Canada and the United Church of Christ and the Wica. They support same sex marriage. They support saying, but I want you to just listen to me. And I said I was going to take my time this morning. And so it says marriage is a relationship between two people who have made a legal agreement to live together. When a man and a woman are married or wedded, they become husband and wife. When two men call themselves get mar getting married, what are they called? Help me out, some of you smart people. If two men get married, what are they called? Which one is the wife and which one is is the husband. You may change the ceremony, but let me tell you something. Just because a wolf put on sheep clothing, that doesn't make him a sheep. You can masquerade around in a dress. That doesn't make you a woman. You can masquerade around in, in a suit as a man, but that doesn't make you know what make you a man. The tools that you have make you what you are. The, your, your position in reproduction tells who you are. So when a man and a woman get married, then we have what? A husband and a wife. If two men get married, look like we have two husbands. If two women get married, we have two wives. Do, do you not know polarity doesn't work? Electricity doesn't work except you have a negative and a positive. If you have two men get married, you do not have a husband and a wife. We're going to have to change our dictionaries. We're going to have to change wording because I don't care how you say it and how you put it together. You, brother, you will never be a wife because the wife is the one that bears the egg and she's the one that's able to reproduce. Not too long ago, Oprah with her demonic self, she came on with this demon that is supposed to be a man, but actually it wasn't a man that was going to have a baby. See, you, Paul said it like this, that you know what Paul said? Uh, the man, the woman is not without the man. In other words, God took Eve from Adam, but he let you also that ain't nobody, ain't nobody, every man, ain't no man without the woman. Every man that's on the face of the earth, he has a mother. So this is what I'm looking, I was just, you know, looking at this thing and sort of rationalizing, saying to myself that if we have two of the same poles, two men, Two women, they cannot reproduce. Do you not know if if gay marriage couples out? I can't call. I won't call you husband and wife. You'd never be that. But if gay marriage couples will ever have children, they have to adopt. So that means if heterosexual people stop having children, then they can't get any children because they gotta. They have to adopt. Therefore, they cannot reproduce. Now I don't care how you say it. And they taught me too much in school. And one thing our government is doing in the way of breaking our children down, they're teaching our children to be stupid, to be dumb. Is 
in school. They don't want you to know. But see, back when we were in school, we had those big, thick, heavy government books and history books. I'm talking about I almost put wrinkles in your arm trying to carry them home. But now it's a different ball game. But what I'm trying to get us to see that if the husband is the husband and the wife is the wife, they can reproduce. But two husbands, if you get married, you are not a wife. If two women get married, you are not a who's going to be the husband. But if you say, OK, I'm the husband, but you still got the tools to be the wife. You still two wives and it won't work. And this is the this is the foolish thing about it. And when two people of the same sex marry somewhere down the line, one has to take on the position of being the stud, of being the male. And that's just the way it works. But you can't be that because you are not that. Your DNA has not changed. Your chromosome, I don't care what you do and how you do it, you are not equipped to have a baby, brother. And if you and for far as you know, you're going to be brother. I don't care what you say. You got to take hormone. You got to do this. Both of y'all going to the bathroom sharing razors. Both of y'all using barbasol. Ain't that a nasty mess? Both of y'all wearing BVDs and all this kind of mess. And you supposed to be the, huh, you supposed to, God, you know, this stinks. Boy, I'm telling you the truth. This is really stinks. And you sorry preachers out there don't have enough to say something about it. God forbid. Heaven is mad and I'm mad. I'm like Eddie Child. I am man and, and it takes all of this for us to understand what marriage is all about marriage serves as the basics for the family marriage serves what the father teaches the son what he's supposed to do when he come up in life the mother teaches the daughter what she's supposed to do when she come up in life how in the world can two men get together and you're gonna raise a little girl now sister i'm gonna tell you something brother you will never have a cycle now how are you gonna tell a young lady what to do and how to do with your stupid self and you think that you can tell a young lady how to be when she start going through all these changes growing up and becoming a young lady and you over there oh god help us don't you know this is a nasty situation but our government is saying our president is saying it's okay and these milk mouth preachers that's been bought you are afraid to say anything because you've been bought by a 501c3 and you don't you you're afraid to say anything because you know what they'll do to you but i'm not afraid you know it, it, it's time for someone to take a stand for holiness and you know as i said i've got plenty of time giving you again a special invite we're going to be in revival. We're going to be in revival November the 19th through the 22nd. November 19th through the 22nd, United Holiness Deliverance Temple. Apostle Harold Rogers is going to be the speaker. You can come and meet the man behind the mic. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. And our theme is, I'm different and I don't mind. We're going to have a time, Leviticus 10 and 10. It's going to be awesome. And they, that ye may put a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. I'm getting ready to open these pipes up, but I, I want to throw that out there for you before I got these airways opened up. I'm telling you, bring you on, and on the 22nd, that Saturday night, we're going to have a special anointing night. Bring your prayer cloth. Bring your oil. We're going to pray over them. We're going to believe God for you. We had a young man that came to church this past weekend, walked in while I was preaching. God saved him and filled him with the Holy Ghost. Come on, Carl. You on there. Talk to me. I agree with everything you said because you are telling the truth. And I want you to pray. Just pray for me. Pray for me because uh, I've been having a back problem. Turn your radio down just a little bit, please. Oh, okay. All right. Turn your radio down just a little bit and talk up just a little bit. You having back problems? Yes. Is it hurting right now? Yeah, Turn your radio down. Okay, I got it. Now talk up so I can hear you. I, I'm just telling you too that I called in too to let you know that I agree with everything you were saying. I appreciate that. I heard what you said. Now you say you're having back problems? Yes. Are your back hurting right now? No, it's not hurting. Well, right why now. why did it stop hurting? Well, sometimes when I get up and walk around. Well, get up and walk for me right quick. Come I'm on. I'm walking around now. That's why I say it's Oh, it's not hurting, though. Uh-uh. But I do. But God, in Jesus' name, I bind this that it never return. Yes. And I thank you for it. Sis, I claim it done. Is that all right? Yes, all right. Go with God and keep me in your prayers. Will you do that for me? I sure will. Go with God. Go with God. Go with God. We had a young man. Uh, a young man. I say he's a young man like he was old. He came to church Sunday. Come on, Carter. You're in the pipe. Come on. Talk to me. Pastor, all I want to do is say thank you, man of God. I can't even cook. I'm so on fire. I am with you all the way. I appreciate that, sister. Listen, let me tell you something. That revival that we're going to be having on the 19th through the 22nd is going to be a bond burn. I'm going to be loose. I'm going to be free to say what I need to say. You ought to yourself to be there. I do something. I appreciate if you tell somebody about that revival that's going to be at United Holiness Deliverance Temple, November 19th through the 22nd. That's Saturday night. It's going to be a special anointing night. All right? All right. Help me out on that. Will you do that for me? Man. Go with God. Go with God. Go with God. Be blessed now. All right. All my listeners out there, so you can find me on YouTube. Now, we got last uh, Saturday before last message on YouTube, and uh, I'm telling you what, people are enjoying what they're hearing, and I'm enjoying putting it out there. Come on, Carl, you're in the pipe. Talk to me. I'm, I'm enjoying 
on what, what, uh, what I hear. I'll be waiting on you to come on the radio on Saturday morning. But I'm calling for prayer for my grandson. You know, he talked to himself. He'd be in the room, and everywhere he'd be at, he'd talk to himself. I know that ain't nothing but the enemy. All right, but sister, what we're going to do, we're going to bind that devil, all right? Yeah, and his God, in Jesus' name, him. we take dominion over this spirit right now. Loose him and set him free in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it right now. Go with God, baby. Go with God. I Go bless, with God. I oh, God. I tell you, this young man came to church Sunday morning. He, had, he said he was taking 18 pills, and he had them in his car, prayed the prayer of faith for him. God healed him so. Unbelievable. Come on, Carl. You're in the pipe. Talk to me. Praise him. I'm enjoying you, Pastor. Thank you. And I thank you for the truth, because it will make them free. Ah, uh, yes, it will. Want, yes, God delivered me 21 years ago from that spirit. All right. And I thank God for making me the woman that I am. All right, for, sis. For his glory today. Yes. And I want you to know he did say Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. <laughs> Don't you start nothing. Oh, no, Listen, I got, I, you, you're getting ready to get piped up. I got but you in my did. prayers, all right? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> you be and glad. I thank you for the truth, okay? All right. Come show up at the revival and give me a little backup. Is that all right? Oh, praise him. I Go hope with I'll God. Go with God, there. honey. Go with he God. He carries in the Lord. Yes. Yeah, we prayed for this young man Sunday after we prayed for him, and I told him to go pick up this chair and give me six curls with it. He said, I'm not supposed to pick up 35 pounds. Do you not know? He looked at me, and he said, this is crazy. He was doing it with one hand. Then he changed hand and went to the other hand. He said, this is crazy. This is crazy. God healed him. So and this other man said he fell on his bicycle and messed his knee up, and his shoulder was so. He said he couldn't even put his hand over his head to comb his hair. Do you know what God did? The power of God hit that man. And he had his hand across the top of his head, touching the other side of his shoulder. And he squatted up and down. I'm telling you, I don't think I can do that. And, I, and, 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 I, and some of them that didn't believe it, I told him, I said, after he went back to his seat, I said, brother, show him what God can do. He just, was just squatting up and down. He said, I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. God, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is a miracle working God. I got a few minutes left. 972-988-1040. 972-988-1040. You're talking about a time. This Bible. It's going to be awesome. As I said, I've got a chance to say some things. I can lay it out there. I can take my time. I can show you exactly where this country is. This thing is staged. This thing is being being staged in more ways than one. Just like I said, the United States in 2008, 2000, 2007, 2008, and 9 put a patent on Ebola. Why would you put a patent on on such a virus as that they did it for germ warfare and the thing has been tested and now it's been shown what it can do. Come on, Carla, you're in the pipe. Talk to me. Good morning, Pastor. Go ahead. Uh, I agree. I enjoy your message this morning. What is the name of your church and your full name, please? All right. So I want you to say that again now? The name of your church and your full name. Okay, the name of our church is United Holiness Deliverance Temple. And if you go on the web, you can look up U H U H D T Church, or okay. you got that. Yes. And sir. if you, you if you look up if you look up U H D T Church and you go to uh, YouTube, you can pull us up there on the Apostle Rogers, and you can see the broadcast from the other Saturday. And just sit yourself down and get comfortable and just lock yourself in because it's awesome. You get a you get a chance to. Matter of fact, they even got some pictures on there. You can see what I look like. Not a bad looking old boy. The Lord been good to me for about sixty years. So just keep me in your prayers. Will you do that? You pray for me too, brother Billy Fake. All right, Doc. You be blessed. Be blessed. All right, 972-988-1040, 972-988-1040. I am wrapped tight. Come on, caller, you're in the pipe. Talk to me. Hey, Brother Harry Rogers. It's Brother Bill, Jack Bill, man. How you doing? I'm better than blessed. How about you? Man, look at here. Keep doing what you're doing. That's all I called to tell you. Be encouraged, man. All right, Doc. You know I appreciate that. Stand, but come, come, pay me a visit at the revival. Yeah, it's going to be hot, okay? I, have all, I already said I am. Ah, boy. Let me I'm, tell you, it's going to it's going to be a bond burn, okay? You know I know you. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Be blessed, okay? Yeah. All right, brother. Be blessed now. Be blessed. 972-988-1040. Yes, we're we getting this thing cranked up for our pre-Thanksgiving revival. The Lord delay is coming tomorrow morning. I'm going to be in the pulpit tomorrow morning and tomorrow night. UHDT is going to be hot tomorrow. I don't care what you're bound by and how long you've been bound. One thing about God, 
God is a righteous God. The, the Lord said, I am the Lord thy God, and I change it not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God doesn't change. The word of God is settled in heaven. And when God says something, God means exactly what he says. It's not about what man say. The word of God is right all by itself. God doesn't need anybody to sanction his word. His word is right all by itself. Whether you believe it or not, what if some doesn't believe? That doesn't stop God from being God. He, he abided faithful because he cannot deny himself. Come on, caller. You're in the pipe. Talk to me. Yes, sir. I'm calling because I listen to you every Saturday. All right. But if I tell you, you walked it this morning, believe me. Well, I appreciate that. And I do intend to attend the revival. All right, sis. Listen, we're going to have a time. Bring your shouting shoes, all right? I already have them. Ah, just sort of get them shined up so you can make sure the heel's on tight because we're going to throw around hard. Is that all right? I there, they won't need, I won't have on any. <laughs> That's God what I'm talking about. You know what we're going to have? We're going we're gonna to have old holiness sanctified That's church. That's where I'm from. And That's we're looking I for God to move here. and deliver, okay? And God bless you. All right, you baby. It like it was. Keep me in your prayers, all right? I will do that, and you pray for me. All right, go with God. Go with God. 972-988-1040. 972-988-1040. Boy, my time is getting away. Look like these 45 minutes just slid on down the tube. I want you to know I love God, and I appreciate God for all he's doing. Appreciate all my listeners out there, those of you that's been faithful listeners and standing with me all these years, and now we've gone in these 45 minutes. Two or now, and you're right there beside me. And I want you to know how much I appreciate you. I'm looking forward. Come on, caller. You're in the pipe. Talk to me. God bless you, Pastor. Yes. I am calling, asking for prayer that um, God would grow my natural hair. And um, I kind of been going through, I guess, a little stress, and it's kind of breaking my face out. So I'm asking for prayer that, you know, I really don't want to do weeds and stuff like that. It's not wrong with them, but I'm... I understand just, what you're saying. You want what's yours. To grow my natural hair. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. And I'm going to give you a special invite to come to our revival because at that revival, I'm asking those to bring their oil and bring their prayer cloths. Sister... I have seen God, my, my grandson had uh, some sores in his head and they would come periodically. And I mm -hmm. gave him a prayer cloth after I finished preaching one Sunday. He went home and my daughter sent me a picture and he had taken this towel and made it like a bandana on mm -hmm. his head. Do you not know his head is clean now? I don't know when yeah. the last time I saw this. Jesus Amen. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're mm -hmm. going to pray the prayer of faith right now. God, in Jesus' name. Honor my sister's faith. Do it, O oh God. Show your glory in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it right now. And we do give you the praise. Sister, I believe God. Is that all right? Amen. Oh, God. God. Go with God, baby. I got three and change. My day is getting away from me. If you want to get in the pipe, you better call quick. 972-988-1040. 972-988-1040. Remember again, November the 19th through the 22nd, you're truly going to be in revival at United Holiness Deliverance Temple. Numbers to the church at 972-329-3550. And that special sale number that you can call after I go off the air is 972-329-6888. 972-329-6888. 6888. Come on, caller. You're in the pipe. Talk to me. Um, yes. I was calling for prayer. Okay. Um, just to um, give God all of me. I want to be saved. No smoking, no drinking, just to give God all of me. I tell you what, brother, if, if my time is getting away from it, but if you could do this, if you really mean something with God, I challenge you to show up at church tomorrow. Come by my church tomorrow and just come down the prayer line, and, and I will. we will believe God. You will never be free until you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You can confess and be free, but if you don't get filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have the power to stay free. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself, but the Holy Ghost is what keeps you. And so I want you to know something. If you can do that for me, call the church after we go off there. To all my listeners, it's been a blast out there this morning. My time is coming. Going. I got to get out of the way. Listen, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God until we come your way again next Saturday. I want you to do something for me. Go with God, and God will go with you. Be blessed. All your goodness I will see in the land of the living. Yeah. And if it had not been for you standing on my side, where would I be? If not for you.
KGGR, 1040 AM, a Martinson Broadcasting Station. Welcome to the Light of the World, Pentecostal Church Incorporated radio broadcast with Bishop Raymond Pentagar, pastor, and Apostle Patricia Pentagar, overseer. And it makes our heart glad that you tuned in today as we bring you the complete truth 